Hey YouTubers, Rob Moffitt. Good morning. This video is going to be about three things. The first thing is a review of my old 10-year-old uh, HEPA air filter by Honeymill. It's the uh, 5250S. And I'm going to show you the criteria I used to purchase it and uh, how well it's been operating. And you could use the same information to select your own filter if you're looking for one. Also, I'm going to go over why these type of filters may be good to help with the current virus, uh, the science behind it. And uh, finally, I'm uh, going to briefly look at a NASA study that shows that the HEPA filters may be much better than we realize and a really cheap, actually free way to improve the efficiency of your filter by a large amount. Um, so let's get started. This is my old filter I bought about 10 years ago. I bought one for my brother. We had uh, the Everglades were on fire. There was a lot of smoke and he was dying from uh, it. And so I bought him one after he got his. I said, you know, it's, it, it's such a good filter. I want one for myself. So and I bought it and I've not used a lot, but whenever there's been smoke or bad air outside, I've used it. And it's made a huge difference. I was able to breathe inside the house. Um, they, they're very efficient. They work very simply, this particular model. It sucks the air in from the outside and then goes through the pre-filter and then the HEPA filter and then the air comes out around the top. You have two recess buttons here with a light that turns on telling you when you need to change your pre-filter or your HEPA filter. This is the speed dial with a blue light. I put some tape on it because at night you don't want the blue light in your bedroom. So that's probably one of the only negatives of the filter is the, the blue light, but it's such a simple uh, uh, way to solve it. Many of the filters out that are newer have uh, a lot of advanced features that really aren't needed. You just need it to filter the air. That's, that's what, and the new ones, they're very expensive and they've got Bluetooth and they're a bunch of buttons where if the cat jumps up on top, it, it resets them and turns it on. <laughs> This is this is perfect. It's all I need. But but uh, I'll go over the different criteria I use to pick my filter. But this is how you operate it. Uh, it has a, a lifetime permit HEPA filter. Um, this is misleading. It's not going to last a lifetime. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess what they mean for the life of the filter, you have 99.97% germ reduction, and that's true because. A 0.3 filter will remove uh, all bacteria because bacteria, the largest or the smallest ones, I think, is 0.3 micron. And this removes stuff or particulate matter from the air at 0.3 micron. And probably even more. I'll show you why at the end of the video for the NASA study. But uh, the main thing you want to know is it has two filters in them and the uh, carbon filter that's on the outside, pre filter, you're supposed to change it every three to four months if you use your filter every day all day long i've not changed mine but one time in 10 years because i don't use it that often you can purchase these online for about enough to make three or four filters for about 15 to 20 dollars the happy filter is more expensive it's like 59 dollars, but using it daily you shouldn't have to uh, re replace it until three to five years. And also it can be vacuumed out. This cannot be vacuumed or washed. Now to operate, it's such a simple device. There's a screw plate on the bottom. You remove it, then you remove the bottom, and then you have access to your HEPA filter. And the pre-filter is taped around the outside. We're gonna see how bad it looks. I haven't. <laughs> Removed in a long time. Yeah, this is all the cat and uh, dog and, and, and human dander and dust that you don't realize it's in the air. It's been sucking out. But this is on the pre-filter, so it doesn't get into the, the HEPA filter. And it also has carbon in it to reduce any odors. It's very good for removing smoke odor, odor of uh, people who smoke or pipe or cigars and so on, or if the Everglades are burning. And... You remove this, put on a new one with a piece of Velcro, and you're done. This is the interior without the filter. This is the only moving part is the, the fan motor here. 
and this is the rubber that makes a seal. It's very soft, but it gets a little dirty there. You want to clean it. This is what the rubber goes on. Makes a good seal. Goes back in. Easy peasy. Tighten it back down and you're done. That's how simple it is to repair, replace your filter. And like I said, if you don't like the lights, you can put a piece of tape on it. It's no big deal. So that's how to use the filter. Now let's show some of the um, let's show the criteria I used to pick the filter. I needed a rather large one. I didn't want to get a tiny one. This filter uh, will, will you can be used in a room by about 390 square feet. It's also a true HEPA filter. We'll go over HEPA filters in just a second. It has a, a CADR uh, rating of 250. This is a standard industry rating. It's a, a clean air delivery rate, 250 square feet per minute. Um, it's an industry standard. When you buy a filter, you want to check what the CADR rating is because they're standardized across all air filters. In 10 years ago, it cost 164. Now that's about what it costs used. The replacement filters are $14 for the pre filters and $59 for the main filter, the HEPA filter. The power cost, different people get different readings. On low, they're getting 90 watts, medium, 145 watts, and for high, 181 watts. It's not an inexpensive filter to run. Um, it uses more power than a lot of the others. But some of the others, I don't understand how, even though they're brushless motors, they're telling people they get 0 0.9 watts to run on low. I don't know how efficient that is working if it's only using 9 tenths of a watt per hour. It's, I, I, I don't, I'm not trusting that. Um, then it's not too, too, too uh, quiet either. On low, it's not bad. It's probably lower than my air conditioner, but it's 45 decibels on low, 52 at medium, 57 on high. It has a five-year warranty. Honeywell has a pretty good reputation. Got a lot of good reviews on Amazon. The only advanced features are it has a replacement filter lights. And the positive, it's it's a workhorse. It, it, it they, they last for a long time, and very very simple. Very little go wrong. And the negative is, a lot of people don't like the blue light. Let's go over why I think these are good to use with the viruses that's going around. Uh, we talked about the CADR rating. Um, what is HEPA? I keep talking about HEPA filter. That's the most important thing. HEPA. It stands for a uh, high efficiency particulate air. It's, it's a, a rating that tells you it's going to capture microbes, dust, and particulates down to 0 0.3 microns. Well, a micron, what is that? Uh, your hair, the diameter, the thickness of a single strand of hair is between like 80 and 100 microns. This will capture something that's one third the size of one micron. So if you have hair that's 80 microns, this is like 240 sizes smaller than the diameter of a hair. That's what the uh, HEPA filter will trap. You, you look at uh, bacteria. I think the smallest bacteria is 3 micron. So that's how small it can trap stuff. And I'll show you that NASA study in a few minutes that, that maybe it traps even higher or, or smaller uh, uh, diameter material. Um, now, what about the virus that's going around? That's the most important thing. National Library of Medicine says it's 0 0.125 micron or 125 nanometers. So if our filter will trap stuff that's 0 0.3 micron, this would go through the filter. It's 1.25 micron. So, or 0.125 micron. So if you Think about it though, usually the virus doesn't travel around all by itself. It's being released into the air through uh, when people cough and sneeze. That's called aerosols or biological aerosols. And those are normally the size 0.5 to 3 microns. So 0.5 is larger than 0.3, so this filter would trap it. And it would be 
at an efficiency of 99.7. So if I had someone in my house and they had the virus and you were taking care of them and you didn't want it to spread, this would be something helpful to reduce the uh, spread of aerosols in the air. I wanted to bring this study up by NASA. I'm not a physicist or an engineer, but it looks to me like the HEPA filters may work better at removing particulate matter than we realize. I think the the industry standard of 0 0.3 is based upon, well, that's the openings of the material. So that's how big a material should trap. But it looks like from reading this study that the HEPA filters are able to trap material at much smaller sizes. Um, let's go down to page seven. This is a good uh, uh, graphic here. It shows how uh, particulate matter is trapped in filters. These gray parts are the filter and the blue is the uh, particulate matter. Most of the dust and things are trapped, the particulate matter, by impaction. The stuff is just slammed into the filter and it sticks. The second method is by strain straining. It's trying to go through a hole that's too, too small. But you also have other things like electrostatic attraction, uh, interception and diffusion that are really complex that uh, show that even smaller particles may be trapped than the size of the filter. It's pretty fascinating. But we want to go down to page seven. The author came up with a statement that shows how people can improve the efficiency of their filter. Um, small changes in flow velocities through the media result in large changes in particle penetration to the filter. Um, in other words, a simple HEPA rated filter will perform as an ultra rated or better filter by simply lowering the flow velocity through the media. And he gives some more diagrams and math. So you can increase the performance of your filter just by reducing the speed. So instead of leaving your filter on high <laughs> 24 hours a day, you should be putting on low. And if you come down to the very end conclusion, uh, when used alone, HEPA rated media provides superior performance for removing virtually 100% of particulates. So if I'm reading this study right, HEPA filters under the right circumstances can remove particles even smaller than 0.3 microns. So um, it, it's pretty clear that if you have a virus in aerosols that are 0.5, the, the filter should work fine. But if you have particles even smaller, it looks like the filter could also be helpful in removing them. Um, this is the filter on Amazon. They don't have them for sale. But if you use the criteria I use to purchase mine, the room size and the uh, different classification, you, you can uh, find one that will be suitable for yourself. I'm not going to tell you which one to buy or leave a link said buy this one or that one. Uh, you just need to make sure it's HEPA and it meets your requirements for the, the, the size room and how quick you need it to work and so on and how much money you're willing to spend. Now, I have a page on Amazon that shows all the stuff I've bought over the years that I liked and I include this filter, but they're, they're not for sale right now. But if you use this link I have at the, in my video description, if you go to Amazon, you don't have to buy anything on this page. If you go to Amazon and buy anything, they'll throw me up a few pennies uh, when you buy something. So it's, it's very helpful. I don't have a Patreon for my channel, but if people want to help me out, if they go to Amazon, if they just use that link 
and they buy anything, not stuff that's on my page, but just anything on Amazon, it's helpful. But if you're interested in things that I bought over the years that I like, this is the stuff. I don't put it up here unless I bought it and I like it. All right, guys, hope that's something that's helpful to you. And if you're thinking about getting an air filter, it gives you some ideas of what to look for. And also maybe an eye opener about using the filter to help with the virus and how uh, you can also maybe reduce the speed of your air filter to increase the efficiency of it, according to that NASA study. All right, guys. Hope this is something that's helpful to you. Take care. Uh, see you out there.